But I want to minister to you this morning uh, about the call of God and your answer to it. And God calls us. God knows how to call us. And we are to answer to his call. So as we pray, I want to pray over the congregation. I want to pray over your families and homes. I want to pray over our school system here in Eastland and the entirety of Eastland County that God would minister. We're living in a day that we're seeing like none other that the culture is changing and changing fast. We're living in a day where if we don't have a breakthrough, a spiritual breakthrough, we're going to be dealing with issues that we don't know how to deal with. But God does, and that's why we need a spiritual breakthrough. And strongholds must come down, and we'll be ministering more and more in regard to those things throughout this coming month. But I, I want to, let's pray with me that the Spirit of God will move in our, in our county schools, schools across the county, in our homes, in our church, and everywhere that we go. Father, we render to you glory and honor and praise. And we pray that you would cause and allow a moving and a working of your spirit, showing forth the fullness of your glory and of your praise. We know that you are God, and there is none like you in the heavens or the earth. We know that you call us to follow you. For Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. You call, and we must answer. Father, I pray that you would work through us and move through us by your spirit, by your word, by your grace, to the changing of many lives, to the changing of many souls, to the salvation of this county. Let your spirit move and have free course in our schools today. Let your spirit move and minister to, to throughout the entire school systems in each community of this county, Father. Let your spirit move in our homes. Let your spirit minister to every heart and stir our hearts, stir our souls, direct our thoughts. Father, let your spirit challenge us until we come in fullness of the unity of the spirit and the unity of God the faith. We need you and we hunger after you. And I pray that you would cause and allow your spirit to move in this house through this congregation, Father, letting us grow in grace and maturity in Jesus Christ. We surrender all for your praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me invite you to stand for the reading of the word. I want to take through for a text from 1 Samuel chapter 3, we'll read 10 verses of Scripture. Verse 1, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Now Samuel was just a little boy, just a, a runt of a boy. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. The, there were not many visions and word given to the people through the prophets. Verse 2. One night Eli, Eli is the high priest at this time, whose eyes were becoming so weak because he was growing older, becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. Verse 3, the lamp of God had not yet gone out, the lamp in the temple, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Verse 4. Then the Lord called to Samuel. Now remember, Samuel is a very, very young boy. God has a call for every one of us. And sometimes he calls us when we're young. Sometimes we do not give answer until we are older. But the Lord called to Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. And he, Samuel, ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Verse 6, again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. 
Verse 7, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. He's just a young boy and he does not know the Lord. He does not know the voice of God. He, he, he's not familiar with, with all of this. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Verse 8, the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. It was the Lord. Verse 9, so Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Guys, there's a time that we must lay before the Lord and hear the voice of God. Listen to the call of God. And verse 10, the Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. You may be seated. And again, I pray, Father, bless the ministry of the word, bless the reading of the word and the teaching of the word in Jesus' name. Now, God created man to serve him and to do his will. God did not create mankind so that God would have someone to serve. God created mankind that we would serve the Lord. Our text documents God calling the prophet Samuel at a very young age. And the following verse gives proof of the apostle Paul acknowledging his calling in Romans chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. God is calling you because he wants to set you apart. God has a place for you. God has a job for you. God has, a, there is a need for you. Let me pause. This is why we do not have time to murmur, gripe, bellyache, complain, get disgruntled, and separate ourselves apart from what God calls us to do. God calls us to love. God calls us to build each other up. And the, the familiar word in the King James Version is to edify one another. And that literally means to build a multi-level edifice. Build each other up. We're not called to build ourselves up. We're called to build each other up. And as we do so, then God is able to build us up. As we do so, we help build one another up. Throughout Scripture, God has called the ones He chose to use. God is always calling. And He is calling you. If you are not familiar with the call... Pray and ask God to help you hear His voice and to distinguish His voice from every other voice. Noah was called to build an ark and save his family from the judgment of God. Isn't that amazing? And I don't have time to go into these stories or tell a lot of detail about these people. That's why we always encourage you to read your Bible and know what God says. God has something very specific to speak to you about. Even if you hear the voice of God, even if you answer your call, even if you say, yes, Lord, but you never hear his word, you can never answer his word. If you do not hear his word, you cannot answer his call. He calls you to himself, not to yourself. He calls you to his will, not to your will. He empowers you to walk in his will when he calls you. He does not empower you to walk in your own will and grace. Because you have no grace. You may have a will, but you have no grace to give unless that grace comes through the Lord. And you give that grace to those around you. Noah was called to build the ark and save his family from the judgment of God. So with this story, pro tip number one, do what God tells you to do, even if it doesn't make sense and others don't understand 
always be willing and ready to answer God's call. I remember I was called to preach at a very young age, but I remember those who told me, they said, I missed my calling. Well, I may have, but uh, so far I've enjoyed what I'm doing. But I do remember in those early days, I would stand up and I would stumble and fumble around and, and uh, embarrass myself. And, and as I stepped down, I felt so humiliated but I don't know how many times the Lord would speak to me and just simply as stepping down steps in that small church, he would say, I called you to do this. It's okay. We don't have to be understood by everyone around us. Let's answer the call of God. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1, Abraham was called to leave his nation and go to another land a land that God chose for him, not a land that he chose for himself, on the trek to this new land to, that would become his land, the land of Israel, Abraham actually stopped for a while. I don't know how long, it's not clarified, but he stopped in another country and he had to wait till his father died before he could release himself from this, his former heritage God is calling us from our past and if you want to get to where God is calling you the quicker the sooner the more expeditiously you can escape your past and move in the direction God is leading you the sooner you will find yourself walking in that land of promise God has for you so pro tip number two regarding Abraham. Often God tells us what to do before he tells us how to do it. And in my life, I know God has showed me greater things and told me where to go. And I had no idea the culmination of everything. And as I've said before, the manifestation of the promise is always greater than the promise itself where God is leading you and where God is calling you, the result will be greater than you would have thought or imagined. At a burning bush, Moses was called by God to lead the children of Israel through the Red Sea and out of Egyptian bondage. Now, most of you remember the story, I'm sure. And in order to get away from Egyptian bondage, and there's a long story there, they had to cross the Red Sea and the Red Sea that was their path of deliverance began, became the place for the destruction of those who oppressed God's people. Pro tip number three. Do you like these pro tips? I like sharing them. Pro tip number three. God will go out of his way in order to get our attention. Sometimes God allows it to seem like the odds are surmountable against you and, and you're, you can't go any further here and back here there's, there is all kinds of, of things against you and he'll do things to get our attention. Just like with the children of Israel, he had to do things to get the attention of the world and, then, and to this day, the, the, the people all across the world talk about how the children of Israel came out thought they were free, but now they're about to be annihilated by Pharaoh and his army. And God opens up a path, and they walk across the Red Sea on dry ground. Amen. Always anticipate the path God has opened. You will not be able to figure it out yourself. It's like this. If you were waiting for God to build a bridge across the Red Sea, it would have never happened and you would have been annihilated. But they trusted God and God told Moses to step to the edge and he, he, he waved his hand and the sea literally parted all that night. The strong wind blew and it separated, making two walls of water and the ground became dry and they marched across for their deliverance. God will go out of his way in order to get your attention. This is his hope of getting us to obey. 
Now Joseph received dreams and visions concerning the outcome of God's plan for his life. Now I'm, I'm mentioning people who were called by God and God worked in their lives and used them. The result for Joseph was that he became the commander of the greatest nation on the earth at that time, Egypt. He also delivered his people from annihilation through starvation during this time. Another pro tip, even through persecutions and tests, God can and will fulfill his plan in our life if only we answer our call. He'll do it by moving the mountains. He'll do it by bringing healing and health to our bodies. He'll do it by bringing refreshing and reviving in the Holy Spirit. God will not fail. And we could talk about Joshua who followed Moses and he was the one who led, who led the children of Israel into the promised land. We could talk about Rahab the harlot who trusted God for the sake of delivering God's people and as a result she is listed in the lineage that goes to the, the time of Christ's birth. We could talk about Gideon who with an army of 300 literally brought defeat to a multitude that could not be numbered, which would have been over a million, or, or I think the estimate was closer to three million. And God gave him victory. God called Gideon. He surrendered when he was afraid. He surrendered when he felt like a nobody. And God used him. And to this name, to this day, his name is great and famous. Samson is another one. Ruth, the beautiful story of Ruth, who just trusted God and wanted to follow her mother-in-law Naomi uh, when Ruth's other sister-in-law went back to her homeland, Ruth followed, and she became listed in the lineage of, the, of Christ himself. Nehemiah was called to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and under great opposition, he stood the test, and God brought victory. What are you called to do? What are you called to do? That is my question. The call of God is upon every heart, upon every soul. Somebody said, I don't know what God called me to do. I want to encourage you to stop, ask, and listen. I have had people in the past come to me wanting me to tell them what God had called them to do. But I can't tell you that. I can tell you, God has called you to follow the words, every word in his scripture. God has called you to do that. If you're not willing to start here, then you won't be willing to, you will be incapable of following God's plan to completion. Isaiah saw a vision of God when he was called, and he saw the angelic host crying aloud, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Pro tip again, God will show us his glory and his goodness, his power and revelation if we will only answer his call. Do you want to see the fullness and greatness of God? Answer his call. What is he calling you to do? Uh, we may be here for a while. I want to follow the leading of the Lord. What, does God, what is God calling you to do? And it comes time, just like the prophet Jeremiah, who, who was called of God, and he said, God, I'm too young, I'm just a child. And God said, never use that for an excuse again. Amen. God can work through the young and the elderly alike. Daniel uh, was, uh, when God used Daniel, he was something like 17, maybe 18 years old. When God used so many, I think Joseph was supposed to be about 17 years old. God is not afraid to call the young, and he's not afraid to use the old. But when God calls you, say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I know what it's like to step up here and be afraid to stand before a congregation of, a, of 101 eyes looking at you, you know. And uh, I'm just trying to be cute and funny. You know? I, I've never been cute before, so I have to try things like that to be cute. But uh, God... When we stand up here and people are, I remember pastoring in the church before we moved here in the little church in Ranger, and the platform was six inches tall, and I would step up and it would seem like I'm 
everybody's looking at me. I remember when we remodeled that small auditorium and we raised the platform from 6 inches to 12 inches. And the first time I stepped up, I felt so exposed to everybody. I just, it just was so intimidating. Isn't that strange? When I was in high school, I would take zeros before I would stand in front of the class and give an oral book report. I know the intimidating factor of this. But when we begin to step out in faith and answer God's call and do things God's way, God can use us. He will not because he cannot use you if you will not answer his call. Amen. So. Okay. I think we're going to get close to being on track. Let me read a few verses of scripture here. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. As a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you, to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Now we're going to be ordaining my brother Jose in just a little bit. A trusted friend, a valued friend. He's been here at times when things seem so overwhelming. I remember the flood that came through. I remember a few other issues. I remember working physically working on the youth building and not having enough help. He's come through. He showed up. He just appeared. He just appeared one day. And at times, there's been times when things were too overwhelming for me. And he showed up, became a friend and a comrade and helped me through so many things. So... But the things that these scriptures say, they say to Jose, live a life worthy of the calling you have received, and so he does. I commend him for that. But I speak that to you. Let's live a life worthy of the calling we have received. Verse 2, he says, be completely humble. That's totally humble. And gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. This is how we lead for God, bearing with one another in love. Verse 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Then we go to verse 11. And this is where God is showing us. Let me explain it this way. In Romans chapter 12, it talks about various gifts. And they are, it said these are gifts that God gives. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. Here in this setting, this is talking about the gifts that Christ has given. It, it was He who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. Here's the reason, verse 12, to prepare God's people for works of service to prepare God's people for works to do work and to be of service of use you cannot be of service if you are of no use and uh, I'll use this for a, a feeble illustration when there is no power here this thing is dynamically worthless amen just dynamically worthless but when the power is turned on, it has great use. All right? I don't want to be condescending. I want to be encouraging. But I want to bring emphasis to this. If you're doing nothing, you're useless. Amen? That old hound dog that sits there on the porch and the guy's, you know, in the rocking chair and, and that old hound dog, he looks so useless. But you put him to what he's called to do Put him on the hunt, he gets in to the arena and he knows how to do, go on the hunt and he's no longer useless. But if he's not doing what he's called to do, that old hound dog is just useless. Hey Amen. You better put him on the hunt. If you will answer God's call, he will put you in the place, in the arena that is fitting for you. 
So to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Here's the reason you should come to church. One of the main reasons. Not just so you can be seen and it's all about you. But here's one of the main reasons so you can help prepare the body of Christ and help build one another up. Remember, you've heard me preach it all these years. Never tear each other down. Only and always build each other up until, verse 13, are we there? Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Amen.